Bobby Chu here. I'm an artist, and in this video I want to share creepy stories from other artists and creative friends of mine. Today's story comes to us from Dr. Michael Habib. He's an anatomist, paleontologist, and artist. Please enjoy. So I, I you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know, this is, this is a story that uh, was brought to my attention originally by one of my mentors when I was in graduate school. So the background here is that I'm a PhD anatomist and I did my doctoral work at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. And like many other older schools of medicine, it has had a number of anatomy departments over the years. And like many medical departments, older medical schools and, and anatomy departments, these days, the anatomical materials, the, the donors, the cadavers are sourced in very ethical, very well-documented ways, but that was not always the case. If you go back enough decades, things get a little bit more uncertain, a little shadier, add a good bit creepier. And when I was there, we had a relatively new facility that we were using, but the old anatomy department had been in the basement level of another building. And when I say the basement level, I mean down where there are boilers and pipes banging and hardly any lights. And, and it had been there over 30 years. It hadn't been there for 30 years. It'd been there 30 to 40 years prior. And so none of the faculty that were in the current anatomy department at the time had ever had anything to do with this old lower levels pseudo crypt. And at some point, the administration at the university decided that they wanted to rebuild that building and, and gut the basement levels to put useful things in there and discovered that the anatomy department, old anatomy department was, parts of it were still there. There was like an old rusted sign kind of still hanging down there, you know, lights sort of flickering, um, but it, it still existed. And they, they called up our, our department, my mentor, and they said, well, technically speaking, since that's old anatomy department materials, it's it belongs to you like your department can claim anything down there if you want and they said we we didn't even know it was still there none of us have been you know none of us were were working here even those of us who've worked here a long time were working here when that department was active like we 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 had some vague recollection that there were some vague knowledge that there was there was uh another department but you can get rid of all of it it's fine just get rid of it like we did we had no idea it was even there. And so they go, okay, well, that's easy. That's great. That's fantastic. That makes our life easier. All right. So they send some staff down there to just clean out. Their thing is the boxes of old tools and just, you know, rusted, useless stuff. And the staff come out just terrified. And one of them, and, and they say, we will not go back in there. And the, uh, uh, the administrators call the department again, call my mentor again and say, you're going to have to go down there and you're going to have to clean it out. Go, what, what are you talking about? Just, they, our staff, our cleaning staff won't, won't enter the facility. What could possibly be down there? So they go down there and they, you know, they're walking down this corridor again, like imagine dripping pipes and just rust and no, I mean, they're, they're sub levels. So there's no windows or anything and old fluorescent lights that are, barely working you're like how are these ballasts even like functional after all this time and they come to you know the door you know, the old door anatomy that's practically rusted off its its uh its screws and they realize that there's actually a door off to the side that looks like it's it's you know with for the condensation on it it looks like it's a chiller room that is actually still being cooled so just from sort of a wastefulness standpoint, congratulations, medical school, you've been powering a walk-in chiller room and not using it for 40 years. So that's great. But you guys are like, okay, so the chiller's still been running 
for 40 years. What is in the chiller? And obviously the staff had gone in there because the door was a little bit ajar. They could kind of see like, you know, you kind of um, uh, see the, the condensation sort of escaping from the, the room a little bit, you know? And so they, they open the door all the way, they go inside and on either side are metal cabinets and they know exactly what they are. I mean, these are, these are, they, they, they're, these were old fashioned ones, but they knew what they were. Those were cadaver trays, fold away cadaver trays. And they've got, de- and they've got locks on them. So they come up with a set of bolt cut- cutters and they cut, cut the bolts and, and pull out the trays. And inside are now partially mummified, basically, but essentially preserved, thanks to preservers and chilling hemisected bodies bodies have been cut down the middle so there's like half a body here and then another one's been cut across the you know transverse as we would call it in half and and there are tags on them that say property of doctor or something that's kind of hard you know barely legible but not anyone i mean you can even take out just make out from the few letters that's not anyone that anyone's heard of or has any recollection of or any knowledge of anymore Okay. Um, and, and that's creepy enough in, in it of itself, at least by modern standards. Like you, you don't, you don't, well, I don't label the cadaver's property of Dr. Habib. Like that's not a thing. That's not the, you know, like, you know, maybe like, you know, you know, must be, you know, managed by anatomy department or something, but not like this is mine. So some guy had, had, had claimed this, uh, and this, this material is human bodies, human material. And and locked it away and like don't touch it and then like probably died or got laid off or retired or whatever and knowing and people forgot it was there and didn't come back to it for you know forty years and we're like okay well that's that would mess someone up if they're not used to this however we had to cut it off cut off the bolts with cutters the the the, the staff did not enter they had no idea what was in these they didn't open any of this this up so what the heck freaked them out. I mean, what, the room was too cold? I mean, what? and then there's another door at the back of the room. And it's slightly in jar now. They're like, oh, they went in there. There's a chilled closet in the back. And they go in they, and they open the door and it's just shelled, the whole floor and all the shelves were all filled with buckets, five gallon white buckets. And they turn one of the buckets and they notice that it has a label that says hands. Okay, we're gonna turn another bucket and it has a label that says feet. I'm like, all right, well, we know what kind of room this is. What did the staff open? And they look down and there's a bucket where the labels actually basically bled off. You can't read the label anymore. And that's, and they opened it. The lid's a little bit open. So they take the lid all the way off and what looks, all they see inside is kind of looks like rotting vegetable soup. And like, huh. and the mentor kicks it with his foot and floating to the surface for just a moment is a half of a severed human head. And it bobs to the surface. And for a brief moment, it looks like it's one eye is looking at the group. And then it resubmerges and they realize it is a bucket of heads.